Good morning. I'm Haley Repass, and I serve in the nursery check-in area. And our scripture today comes from Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning. I'm going to open this morning by asking you to think back to the first ever rap song that you heard. I don't know at what stage of your life rap music was introduced. I'll be honest with you, it's not a common thing in my home. Uh, We sang like praise songs from church, right? I'm going to blame this on my sister. Uh, I believe she brought a cassette tape home one time. It was uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince is what we were listening to. The song was Parents just don't understand. And I remember being a kid, and I'm like, you know what? He's right. Like, my parents, they're out of touch. They don't necessarily get me in the world that I live in. Like, this, this, this Will Smith guy's got something going on, you know? So I, I listened to the song, and I remember singing it. My mom did not approve of it or appreciate it whatsoever. But there's a line that kind of summarizes the, the content of the song. He says, So to all the kids all around the land, there's no need to argue. Parents just don't understand. And you might have felt the same way with your parents. I don't know what they were like. Uh, I honestly I had wonderful parents and a wonderful family. And yet, uh, because I was, I'm human, because I'm flawed and I, and I fail, I often wanted to rebel against what my parents wanted. I thought I knew better. By the way, just to give you a little perspective, when I thought I knew better than my parents and they just didn't get me and they weren't with it and I'm listening to this song, uh, that song came out in 1988. So I was a maximum of eight years old. In all my wisdom, I knew better than my parents. And so, uh, uh, it doesn't get much better. As a matter of fact, the, the older I got, the more I realized that my parents knew, and the more I realized how foolish uh, that I was. Uh, if you are a, a kid in this room, though, you've had the experience where your parents have made a decision, or they ask you to do something, or they don't let you do something that you want to do, and you think, they don't get it. Like, they, they don't understand Like, they don't know uh, the day and age in which we live. They don't know what's best for me. I kind of know what's better. And you've probably had this temptation to rebel and to go your own way and do your own thing. Or maybe you were just kind of a a jerk to them like I was at my parents at times. You know, you're disrespectful in the the way that you speak. Um, The passage that we're looking at today in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verse 12, would tell us that the God of the universe the sovereign God of the world, who spoke all that we know and see into existence, who knit us together in our mother's womb, who saw fit that we would be born into the family that we're born in, in the day and age that we would ultimately live in this place. Um, The God of the universe looked at us, teaching us how we are to live, how we are to know and please God. And he gave us these words, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And God in his wisdom has seen fit to create this family unit, which is profoundly important to not just to us as individuals, but also to our collective society. When you think about your parents and the role that they play in your, in your life, they really do shape you in a profound way. <clears throat> your relationship with your parents is the first relationship that you ever have. It's perhaps the most important relationship that you'll ever have, and it shapes all of your other relationships. When you think about it, if we were to kind of take a a survey of your life and say, you know, man, he's compassionate and he's kind and he's hardworking or he's diligent or he's a lot of fun, we can likely go back and, and look to your parents and have them to thank for many of the positive attributes of your life. Now, in beginning this sermon, I said I had really wonderful parents, uh, but I also know that that's not true for everybody. And for many of you, that really formative relationship, that critical relationship with your parents has been one uh, of brokenness and pain. And so maybe for you, you said I hear when you think about uh, your mom and your dad, um, you think about abandonment. Or maybe it was neglect. Or maybe it was abuse. Or maybe they were just indifferent. And they were so busy chasing after something else that they didn't take the time to notice you. Um, what I said before is true. Um, 
our relationship with our parents has a tendency to affect every other relationship. Uh, if your parents weren't trustworthy kind of people, maybe they sinned against you in some way, uh, you'll have a tendency to have a difficult time trusting other people. If you couldn't trust uh, your parents, who can you trust? Or, or maybe for you, it was a little bit different in, in your life. Maybe uh, your parents were trustworthy, uh, but they didn't handle their money very well, and you had a lot of insecurity about that. And so you have these issues in your life that really come from your upbringing. And so the question would be, with parents all over the spectrum, really, really amazing parents, and then um, some really lackluster parents, how are we as the people of God to look to the Lord and, and say, okay, I want to be obedient to you. I trust that you're God. Your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I want to submit myself to you. How in the world are we supposed to honor our parents? I want to get to that here and speak about what it would look like for us to honor our parents. Um, but a few things that I want to uh, touch on first. Um, the first is this. If we honor God in this, honoring our parents, we submit ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ and honor our mother and father, this commandment actually comes with a promise. So he says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. So the nation of Israel, if you know their story, they had been enslaved for 400 years in Egypt. And God comes and he intervenes on their behalf and he leads, he leads the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and they're wandering in the wilderness, but they're headed for the promised land. It was said to be a, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of blessing and abundance where God was going to provide for them and protect them and make them secure. He, now, so when we hear this, um, this command that comes with the promise that your days may be long and the Lord your God is giving you, you shouldn't just think, oh yeah, I'll honor my parents. I'll live forever. I'm going to be 150, you know, Guinness record. That, that's not what it's saying. Um, rather, as much as we're going to live a long life, uh, you should anticipate you're going to live well. You're going to enjoy the blessings and the abundance of God in your life if you can choose to submit to God and honor your mother and father. So parents are really critical, and God took this command very seriously, just as we've seen with the others. In Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 through 21, and kind of clarifying the law and adding to, um, it says this, if a man has a stubborn, and by the way, fellas, uh, this is many of us, right? We're glad we didn't live under the Old Testament law. Here's what it says. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, in there, right? Who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and though they discipline him, will not listen to them, then his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his city at the gate of the place where he lives. And they shall say to the elders of the city, This, our son, is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. And then all the men of the city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall purge the evil from your midst, and all Israel shall hear and fear. I'm thankful that I did not grow up in the nation of Israel under the old covenant, right? I, I would have deserved this at times in my life. And um, uh, listen, it, if you knew this happened to your friend, right, you would have heard and you would have feared, right? You would have said, all right, God, I'm going to obey you. Like, I don't want to uh, meet that fate. Uh, what you should see here is that God took honoring mother and father very seriously. Now, certainly within Israel, there would have been good parents. There would have been bad parents and everything in between. And yet this command stood for all of the people. So what I want to do today is just ask and answer four questions uh, about honoring your mother and father. The first is this, what does it mean to honor our parents? What would that look like for us to do? The second, are there limits to honoring and obeying our parents? Number three, why should we honor parents? And then the final one is how do we do that? Uh, very practically, how do we honor our parents? As followers of Jesus, we're seeking to be disciples. We want to honor the Lord. What would it look like for us ultimately to do that very practically? So number one, what does it mean to honor our parents. What did, the, what did the God intend when he gave us these words? What did he mean when he said honor? Well, the Hebrew word is kabod, which means weight or glory. Now, again, I told you God kind of established the family, kind of the central organizing unit of society. God has placed our parents in authority over us in our homes, um, and we should give weight to God's design there. Because they're our parents, we should honor and respect them. Now, this word kavod, it can mean to prize them highly, prize our parents highly, uh, having high regard for their position. It can mean to care and to share affection for our parents, and it can mean to show respect and revere. In the end, um, as young people who are still within our parents' household, uh, if we're going to honor our parents, it means that we obey them. Now, 
once we leave our parents' house, we establish our own household. Uh, obedience gets a little bit different for us, right? We don't obey day to day, you know, do your chores. Sometimes I wish they would tell me, get up and do my chores, but that's not how it works for us. But uh, we honor our parents differently. We regard them highly. We respect them. We revere them. We choose to honor them even as adults. So uh, maybe a little more specifically, we'll get to the, the practicalities of this uh, at the end. Um, but maybe just understanding that to be a parent is a weighty thing. You know, as a kid, I thought my parents had all the advantages. You know, they got to make all the calls. They could make me do the dishes or mow the lawn. I thought, man, yeah, I, they, they have everything made. I didn't realize uh, how much weight a parent carries, how much stress and how many prayers, how much concern goes into you wanting the best for your kids and you're trying to lead them well and you're not perfect yourself. And it can be uh, quite a challenge. There is a weight that parents carry as they, they seek to train their children and teach their children and hopefully raise them to be productive citizens, both of, of this earthly kingdom and of God's kingdom. It's a weight that they carry. Now, um, if you're a parent here and you feel a little bit uncomfortable um, with saying your kids should honor you, uh, I want to say this. It's not because we always deserve it that God has called our children to honor us. It's not because we're perfect and, and do everything uh, just right. Um, but rather, it's because of the position that he's placed us in. It's good both for us and for our kids, so we can trust in that. Now, um, this has been a few years ago, but I've been having a conversation with my kids. And it went something like this. And I was heated, by the way. It was one of those intense dad moments where I'm probably giving out the lecture. And I'm like, if you would just trust me that I'm your dad and that I love you and that I know some things, and if you'll just listen to me, I promise things are going to go better with you. And so I've just had this conversation with my young kids, by the way. And I'm driving on the road right out here outside the church. And it's almost like God's like knocking on the window of my truck. And, and he was like, hey, Jason, you know, I love you. And if you would just trust me and do as I say, I promise it's going to go well for you. Like, I want what's best for you, and I know you think you know what's right, but if you'll just trust me. And it's like been this experience for me where God is using the words I'm saying to my children to echo those things back to me, to reveal this is who he is to me as a heavenly father. And so, listen, as parents, we don't always get it right. We're still continuing to grow um, as followers of Jesus. We're learning what it looks like to be, uh, to reflect Christ to our family, to be a mother or to be a father. It's not always easy, and yet God, in His sovereignty, has ordained that parents would honor their children, I'm sorry, that children would honor their parents, that they would obey them and give them honor throughout their, their life. So, Kids, I want to challenge you with something today. If you have a parent here, you're living in their home, um, before the day ends, would you just tell them thank you for something? Thanks for, thanks for being my dad. Uh, I know you're not perfect, but man, I, I know that you carry a lot of weight. Thank you for being my mom, for loving me and caring for me. Thank you for spending all that money. I don't know if you all know how much it costs to bring a kid home from the hospital. It's really expensive. Thanks for the sacrifices, the lack of sleep, all the, the provision, the energy that's gone into raising. Just find something to tell your parents thank you about. I promise it will bless them. So we are, um, if we're going to honor our parents, as long as we live in their home, we are to obey them in everything. They ask us to do it, we should just do it. If it doesn't make sense, we just submit to them, right? Not that we can't ever have conversations, but we seek to honor our parents by obeying them in everything. Now, this is hard. Especially as you grow up and you're you know, a young man or woman, you're in those teenage years and you start to think you understand some things, right? It's difficult, and yet this is what God has called us to, to submit ourselves to our parents' discipline. So how do we honor? Obey our parents, respect our parents, show our gratitude to our parents. Um, number two, are there limits to honoring and obeying? And this is an important question because not everybody grows up in the household like I grew up in. People, my parents both sought the Lord. They weren't perfect, but they took me to church and hopefully, you know, encouraged me to follow Jesus throughout my life. Uh, but it's not so in every family. So are there limits to our obedience to parents even while you're a kid? And I would say absolutely. The first is this. If your parent would command you to do something that God forbids, you should obey God. You'll remember the apostles. We were doing the Acts series. Um, they had been, begun to preach and teach in the name of Jesus. And the, the high priests and the Jewish authorities, they came to him and they threatened him and said, um, we command you not to teach or preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And, and their response was, um, we're going to obey God and not men. Now, this should be a very rare case in our society, but where a parent would command a kid to do something that God forbids. 
commit a crime or go kneecap somebody, right? Any if a parent would command you to do something that God would forbid, you should obey God. And then uh, on the opposite side of that, if your parent would forbid something that God commands, um, you should obey God. And so if your parent says, you know, you shouldn't worship God or pray to Him, you should go ahead and worship the one true God and pray to Him, right? Not in defiance of them, but rather in obedience to God. And so what we realize is that God is our ultimate authority, and so we should listen to Him first and foremost. Now, this ought to be an extraordinarily rare case, and if you're a teenager in the room and you just found some justification for your action, have a conversation with another adult before you do this, right? So we want to ultimately honor and obey both the Lord and our parents. But here's another one, and probably more common, uh, a more difficult area for us. Once we grow up, and we leave our mother and father's house, and we're joined together with our spouse, um, honor looks differently. Um, once you leave your parents' household, the, this is the, the scripture, it's in Genesis, and then Jesus uh, echoed it in Matthew chapter 19. It says this, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. When you leave your mother and father's household and you establish a new one, uh, you are no longer obligated to obey your parents in the same way. Now, I'll tell you right now, if you don't seek out your parents for wisdom and advice, you're probably a fool, right? You need their input into your life. They've lived a lot of years, but you need to um, leave mother and, and father, and that means um, cutting some of those cords of dependence and even some of those cords of obedience where now you begin to make decisions that are best for you and your home, your household, and, and, and really um, you allow mom and dad to kind of take a step back and you kind of take responsibility for your own life. And I've seen this in marriages, by the way, where um, maybe mom continues to control or maybe uh, dad continues to want to, to call the shots. Um, that's not a biblical model either. You now have your own household. So again, consider their wisdom. Strive to respect and honor mom and dad, but you no longer have to obey. So uh, what does it look like to honor? Um, generally obedience and respect. Number two, are there limits to honoring our parents? The answer is yes. And then number three, why should we honor our parents? What's the big deal? You know, like... Uh, our parents aren't perfect. They make mistakes. Why should we choose to honor them? Um, number one, because it is right. Because the God of all creation, the sovereign God of the world, has ordered the world in such a way that he said, honoring your parents is right. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. He says, children, obey your parents for this is right. And by the converse, we can infer here that to disobey your parents is wrong, which means it's always going to go bad for you when you choose to disobey your parents. So if you feel like your parents aren't worthy of honor and they aren't worthy of your obedience, uh, let me just say this. God is. And if you can't do it because they deserve it, do it because He does. And so by honoring your mom and dad, you're going to honor the Lord. By dishonoring them, you're going to dishonor the Lord. So we honor our parents because it is right. Um, number two, Colossians 3.20, the Apostle Paul tells the church at Colossae, he says, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And so we honor our parents as worship to God, who he deserves it. Do you, do you know the story of the gospel? You and I were hopelessly separated from God because of our sin. Like, we were enslaved to that, and we, there's no way we could have been good enough. We've broken God's law. We couldn't earn our way to His favor. We couldn't do enough good deeds, and we certainly hadn't constrained the bad ones. We had fallen short of God's glory. But God, rather than looking down upon us like an angry father and punishing us uh, in the way that we deserve, God chose to extend mercy to us. In, God demonstrated His love for us in this, that while we were in the midst of our sin, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die the death that we deserved so Jesus stepped down out of heaven. He took on flesh. And he came and he lived a perfect, sinless life for us. And he offered himself on the cross as an atoning sacrifice for, for our sins. It's the great exchange where God took our sins, the sins of those who would trust not in themselves and their own righteousness, but trust in Jesus Christ and his work on their behalf. God would take our sins and place them on Jesus. And God poured out the just punishment for sins on him. And he took that righteous life of Jesus and he credited that to us. So that when God looks at you, he doesn't see your past. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your guilt. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God is worthy of your obedience. 
the cross is a constant symbol of his love for you. He knows you. He hears you. He sees you. And he wants you to walk in his abundance. And so we ultimately choose to honor our parents because it's right. Number two, because it pleases the Lord. And number three, because it, because it leads to our abundance. Think about Jesus. When he did take on flesh, and he was born of a virgin, Mary, uh, Joseph was his earthly father. Can you imagine being God in the flesh? So fully human, so all the weaknesses, all the proclivities toward, you know, struggle and wanting to go your own way that a normal human would have, and yet he was fully God all at the same time. Can you imagine being God and yet still having to submit to your parents? You know, like that had to be a challenge for him. And yet what we see here in Luke chapter 2 uh, in verse 51 says, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. Nazareth, and he was submissive to them. His mother treasured up all these things in her heart. Jesus Christ was submissive to his parents, and he was perfect, right? Um, we can be submissive to our parents and our imperfections as well. So uh, it leads us to abundance. I've said this over and over, um, and I want you to get this in you. Um, every commandment of God, every prompting of his spirit, every time God would draw you, um, it's an invitation to his abundance. Every commandment of God is an invitation to his abundance. And so oftentimes we think, you know, God's restraining me from something that I, that's good, that I want. You know, God's keeping me from joy or whatever. Listen, every commandment of God is an invitation to the most full, rich, abundant life that you could ever possibly live. You want to know fullness in your life? Honor your father and mother. Even when it hurts, even when you don't feel like it, even when they don't deserve it, choose to honor your mother and your father. So that's why we do it. So practically, what are some ways that we can honor our mother and father? Um, number one, and this is the example set for us by Jesus, the best way that we can honor our mother and father is through humble obedience. It means rather than thinking we know what's best, we just simply choose to honor and obey them. Um, you won't always like what your parents say if you're a child here. Sometimes you'll think they have lost it, they're out of touch, whatever it might be. You might think that parents just don't understand, right? But through humble obedience, you choose to show honor to them as your parents. The sacrifices that they made, the wisdom that they might have, uh, you choose to honor them. Do you, do you remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? He'd ask his disciples to pray with him lest they fall into temptation. And he goes, and he's in such agony before the Lord that he's sweating drops of blood. And he prays, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass before me. God, if there's any other way, I don't want to go through with this. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus Christ set the example for us of what humble obedience looks like. And Jesus obeyed God. He went to the cross and it resulted in the salvation of the world. We don't know the results of our obedience every time, but I want you to know God's going to use that. God's going to honor that. You're going to experience God's blessing as a result. And so how do we honor our parents? We, we honor our parents through humble obedience. The second thing we can do is just express appreciation through showing our, our gratitude for our mom and our dad for what they've done for us. And by the way, this isn't just your biological parents. Some of you have been adopted or maybe you've been in foster care. It's just choosing to honor those who have invested in our lives, who've say, served in that role as, as our parent. Um, it's ex expressing appreciation, saying thank you, acknowledging the sacrifices that they've made on your behalf. The longer I'm a parent, the more I realize what my parents have given up for me. The more I look back and realize that I got new clothes before they did. That they pursued my activities before their hobbies. That they served me tirelessly day after day after day. And most of the time I wasn't even paying attention and often I was ungrateful. There's much for us to be thankful to our parents for. Number four, or number three, how do we honor our parents? Um, and this is a big one, especially if you're a young person in this room, but we can do this even as adults. Um, turn to them and not away from them in times of trouble. Um, if you've lived and breathed on this earth, you're going to blow it. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to fail in rather significant ways at times in your life. And, and the tendency for our parents, and maybe it's because we don't want to disappoint them or, you know, let them down in some way, the tendency is to go and to hide that from our parents, try to work our way out of the hole on our own. But I believe to honor our parents would be to be very honest with them about our failures and to ask them to help us walk through those things. Um, 
whether we would acknowledge it or not, our parents have lived a heck of a lot more life than we have. Uh, they've been through some things. They've had their share of struggles, and they often are better equipped to help us walk through our difficulties and our mistakes than we are. And so a way to honor them is to seek them out, turn to them in times of difficulty rather than kind of hot, shying away and hiding from them. Now, the fourth one is, is very simple, and it's, it's just spending time with them. Some of you are removed from your parents, you know, great distances and all that. Uh, maybe it's a phone call a week just to catch up. Maybe you live close enough and you can swing by from time to time and visit and just uh, have an opportunity to um, spend extended time with them. It's inviting them over to dinner or whatever that might look like, but just spending time with your parents, showing them that they're valuable in your life, that you appreciate them for what they, uh, who they are and what they've done. Now, um, I said this isn't always an easy topic, and I, I want to spend a little bit of time here. Um, some of us have broken relationships with our parents, especially as, as adults. And sometimes um, there are reasons why we can't be in cons consistent contact. I, you know, we think about there are times of mental illness, um, times of really severe abuse or manipulation, things like that, where that relationship has to be severed. And um, sometimes that's the case in this fallen and broken world. Um, how do we honor our parents in the midst of difficult uh, situations? Um, the, the scriptural account for us um, when we have conflict with other people, is as much as it depends upon us, we should seek to be at peace with all men. And so one of the things that I would encourage you to do, if you find yourself with a broken relationship today, uh, maybe when you leave here, you should pick up the phone and you make an apology. As followers of Jesus, our calling is to forgive other people as Christ has forgiven us. It's to extend grace to other people as God has extended grace to us. And we know we didn't deserve it. It's, it's to um, love people in the same way that Jesus has loved us. And maybe if you're here today and you have a broken relationship with your parent, I'm not saying this is going to necessarily fix it, but we would choose to say as much as it depends upon me, I'm going to seek to be at peace. And so, you know, you pick up the phone and you make the phone call and you say, listen, I'm going to own my part. I'm sorry for what I've done. Here's how I sinned against you. I want you to know that you're my parent. I love you. I care about you. You know, I want things to be better. And then maybe you're here and you're a parent. And maybe you weren't a great parent. Maybe you've blown it in some rather spectacular ways. And your kids are astray. Maybe they're estranged from you. And uh, you don't have that relationship anymore. Uh, again, I would, uh, I would do my best to seek to be reconciled to them and then trust the Lord with that. Uh, there's a story in Luke chapter 15 where, where God shows us kind of the nature of God toward us. And he tells the story of a young man who was living in his father's house, and he did what many of us do. Um, he thought he knew better. He chose to go his own way. He'd rebelled against his father. He went to him, and he said, hey, I want you to give me my share of the inheritance. And I'm sure at great cost to his father, his dad did indeed. Maybe he had to sell some, some cattle or some land, and he gave his son his portion of the inheritance. And the son, um, he went to a distant land, and he squandered that wealth on wild living and prostitutes. And I'm sure um, his notorious deeds had gotten back to his family. I'm sure it brought some shame upon them. And this young man, upon uh, realizing that the things that he thought were so rewarding and fulfilling were not at all, um, he finds himself destitute. And he remembers his father's house. He thinks, you know what? The servants of my father's house are living better than I am. So he comes to his senses and he begins to make his way home. As he gets closer to the house, he sees somebody, somebody outside. And he gets a little closer. He realizes that it's his father. And the next thing you know, his father is running toward him. And what he realizes is that his father has been waiting for him to return the whole time. And so his father, he, he comes and he embraces him. He, he gives him a hug and he places a robe on his shoulders and sandals on his feet, a ring on his finger. And he says, I don't accept you back as a servant. I accept you back as a son. This son of mine that was lost to me has been found. And so he throws a party and invites his friends and his neighbors like, you need to come and celebrate me because the son that I had lost has come home. He's returned to me. And, and this is the way it is with us and God. Even when we've blown it in rather dramatic ways, God, he welcomes us back with open arms. Jesus is like, hey, you want to know what the kingdom of God's like? It's like that father whose son rebelled against him and he came home. And so that's who we are as the people of God. When we have blown it as kids or as parents, and we just come back to God. We return back to his household. We enjoy the blessings of his kingdom. And so what that may look like is just repentance. Maybe it's acknowledging our failures as a parent or our, parent, or our, our failures as a child. 
confessing those before God, beginning to pray, God, would you begin to reconcile where I've caused brokenness? Would you begin to heal where I've caused pain? And maybe you're a parent here who has a prodigal right now. and You're just crying out on behalf of God. Would you reconcile us? Would you do what you've done over and over again in my, would you do it in my family that we can be reconciled again? Listen, we are a people who hope in Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, who's all powerful, who can raise the dead and who can reconcile people who seem to be hopelessly separated. Uh, What we want to do is live in obedience to God, honoring our mother and father, living in his abundance. Would you bow with me? Father, I just thank you for your word, and I pray, and I'm I'm thankful that this is a church of strong families, that there are wonderful parents here who love their families, who are training them up in the way that they should go, teaching them to love and to fear you. God, I praise you for those parents. I pray that you would strengthen them. God, I want to acknowledge that there's some broken families here too. Sometimes it was some of their fault, and sometimes it's not. God, it's our desire to see forgiveness extended to see families healed, relationships reconciled. And so, Lord, we just invite you into that process. I pray that every man and woman in this room would say yes to you, would seek reconciliation, would seek to honor. And, God, I just pray that stronger families would come, that more of your abundance would be known. God, would you have your way in us. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.